acids and bases and I'm going over like some definitions that we use to classify substances as acids or bases so we need more than one definition because just one definition is not enough to describe the behavior of um, acids and bases so the most common definition is arginous and this one we use in Jenkins 1 so when you have an arginous acid the acid will dissociate giving you in solution um, a proton H plus so an arginous acid it needs to have a proton to give away then for arginous bases what we have it's a similar concept the basic part comes from the dissociation but instead of giving a proton in solution what a base is going to form in solution is the ion hydroxide now this part here is is not always true for acids mm -hmm. depending on how you write down the formula for the acid you might have that proton at the end and i have an example for that part acetic acid or some acids containing that part right there which is um a carbonyl C double bond oxygen and then your hydroxyl group OH those types of acids sometimes the the formula is written like that with the acidic proton at the end even though you have three protons here bonded to that carbon those three protons are not acidic because they're bonded to carbon and that's something that I'm going over later the acidic proton is the one that is bonded to the oxygen so this is still an acid even though the proton is not um, shown at the beginning of the formula so sometimes this type of acid they're represented like that this is a better representation because this is your acetic ion so you have your positive part in your acid which is the proton plus the negative part of the acid which is the acetic ion so they are exactly the same thing it's acetic acid then the second definition is bronsted lowry now this definition looks very similar to arginius but they are not the same when you have a Bronsted acid, the acid is going to donate the proton and the base is going to accept the proton. So this here is going to form pairs of acids and bases. So you're going to have your acid and your base and as the product, you're going to get your conjugates, which is something that I'm going to explain in a little bit. So you have the acid donating the proton and then the base is accepting those protons. So since the proton is being transferred from one substance, the acid, to the other one, the base, we're going to have what is known as conjugate acid-base pairs. So I'm going over this a little bit here and then uh, later on I will go over this again. It's a simple concept but it's important for you to understand what is happening. So I have here like a generic example. B for a base, I don't have a charge, it's a neutral base which means that you don't have an overall charge. If the B, if the base here represented by letter B, it's accepting the proton. That's why I'm adding this plus. The base is accepting that proton and the proton is coming from the acid. So your neutral base accepting the proton is going to give you BH, forming a chemical bond between your base and the proton. And the product of your base accepting the proton is going to be called a conjugate acid. Now, this is not happening by 
itself or alone, right? You need a substance that is donating the proton to the base, and then the base will accept the proton, giving you the conduit acid. The definition of a base is that one, bronster lorry, the base is accepting the proton. Now down here I have an acid, generic one, represented by HA. H is the proton right there, the positive part, and then A represents the negative part of any acid. It's a generic one. So, looking at your definition again, the acid is transferring the proton or donating the proton to the base. So I'm writing down this here as the acid minus a proton because it will be losing a proton in the presence of the base. So the acid losing a proton, this acid, neutral acid, is neutral because your proton is positive one, and in this case, that A represents a negative one. So you're removing the positive part, which means that what you have left now is going to be just the negative part of your acid. The proton is going to the base, and you're getting, what you're getting here, the negative part of your acid will be the conjugate base. So let's look at those in an actual reaction. We have the acid and the base. So you have the acid here and the acid is donating the proton, the base will be accepting the proton. So when the acid is donating the proton, it will be the acid minus a proton, which is going to give you A minus, which is just the negative part of your acid. That A minus is the conjugate base. And then the base is accepting the proton from the acid. So you're getting BH because your base is gaining a proton now, and that will be the conjugate acid. So another way of looking at this, right? Your acid losing a proton to give you the conjugate base, the base gaining a proton to give you the conjugate acid. You have here an equilibrium. Now that equilibrium means that these two are giving you back these ones here. So if you look at these two here, that one right there, you don't have a proton in that one to donate, which means that this substance here cannot act as an acid because for something to be an acid, it needs to be able to donate a proton and you don't have a proton there. Now you have here BH, this one, it does has a proton so this one can actually donate your proton to A minus. If BH donates a proton to A minus, A minus will become HA, and then your BH will become B. Now, BH is a conjugate acid because it can actually act as an acid on this side of your reaction donating the proton. And A minus will be the conjugate base because this one will accept the proton to give you back HA, your original substances. You know? So you can identify your conjugates by looking at your reverse reaction. Whatever is acting as an acid on your reverse reaction will be the conjugate acid because that one will be donating the proton to the base to give you back your original reactants. So I have here two examples. You look at your reaction here, your reactants and your products here. You will see that these two are very similar. The difference between these two is an actual proton. You have two protons in this one and you have only one here. With your water molecule, look, two protons, and in this one, you have three protons. So, H2CO3, the number of protons is going down look, from two to one. The number of protons is going down because this one right here, it's actually donating a proton to the water. That's why you go from H2 in your water molecule to H3 right here. So if this one is the one that is donating the proton, that will be your acid. 
and then H2O, which is your water molecule, that one is accepting the proton. The proton is coming from the acid. And you know that this one is accepting the proton because it goes from H2 to H3. So that one right there will be the base. So the substance that is donating the proton is the acid and when the acid donates the proton, what you get on the product side will be the conjugate base. The substance that is accepting the proton is the base. And when the base accepts the proton, what you're getting is the conjugate acid. The acid and the base will always be on your reactant side, and then the conjugates will always be on your product side. Now, do the second example. You have H2PO4 here, and when you look to your product side, this one is going from H2 to H3, which means that right here, this one is accepting a proton to go from H2 to H3. If that one is accepting a proton, it means that this one is acting as a base. And then we can check what's happening with your water molecule right there. That one is going from H2 to OH. So this one here, it's losing a proton, which means that this one should be the acid. So H2PO4 minus one is the base. And when the base is accepting a proton, what you're getting as a product will be the conjugate acid. And then the acid donating the proton will give you here the conjugate base. So a third definition we have are heinous acids and bases. When your acid dissociates to give you the proton, the base dissociates to give you hydroxide. Then we have bronsted lorry the second one, where the acid is donating a proton and the base will be accepting that proton. And the third definition for acids and bases is Lewis acids and bases. Now this one is a little bit different because everything is based on electrons. So when you have a Lewis acid, the Lewis acid will be something that it's um, electron deficient, which means that you're going to have um, a positive substance because it has um, a low number of electrons. Okay? So your Lewis acid will be able to accept electron pairs. Since it's electron deficient, it wants to get electrons from something else. So that's a Lewis acid. Then the Lewis base, it's something that it's electron rich, which means that you're going to have electron pairs. So your Lewis base, it's something that can actually donate a pair of electrons to form a chemical bond with a Lewis acid. So I have here an example your NH3, ammonia, you have your lone pair of electrons in the nitrogen, if you have your Lewis structure, and that lone pair of electrons can form a chemical bond here with B, which is going to be acting as the Lewis acid. Nucleophile and electrophile interaction, these terms are things that you're going to listen a lot in organic chemistry. So you should find out your definitions for these two, and you should think about how those definitions apply to Lewis acids and Lewis bases. Now, 
all acids and bases they have different behavior in solution so we can classify your acids and the bases as strong or weak and that classification is going to depend on how much your acid or your base dissociates in solution which means that if you have a molecule and you put that molecule in solution or you put molecules of that specific substance in solution depending on how much of that molecule dissociates giving you ions protons hydroxide you can classify something as strong acid strong base or weak acid weak base which means that we can actually um, refer to acids and bases as electrolytes acids and bases are covalent compounds but when they dissociate will give you in solution the ions like the proton or the hydroxide so when you have strong electrolytes what you have is a complete dissociation like when you have sodium chloride sodium chloride is a soluble ionic compound and when sodium chloride is dissolved in water now your ionic bond between sodium the sodium ion and the chloride ion breaks apart in water giving you just the ion of sodium and your chloride ion so when you have a strong acid and like hcl for example this one here and that's not just that's not the only one i have some other strong acids for you listed so your strong acid hydrochloric acid hcl in water will break entirely apart you will have only H plus and Cl minus, only the ions present in solution because your strong acid is a strong electrolyte. If you have weak acids or weak bases, this is not going to happen. When you have a weak acid or weak base, you will have a partial dissociation. So this here, strong electrolyte complete dissociation it applies to strong acids and also strong bases and what I have here is um, two different ways of, rep of representing the same thing HCl dissociates to give you H plus and Cl minus and this is just using the water molecule to transfer the proton from the acid so HCl plus the water will give you H3O plus and the Cl minus, which means that the water here is accepting the proton from HCl.